Hey there, Boots Owen here. I got this Groa Blue system a few weeks ago, and I made a video of that and fitting it in my house and how it didn't work and then it did work. And it runs on these Groa Blue bottles, which, you know, look a lot like a Soda Stream bottle. I got this Soda Stream bottle when I got it, but it wasn't really in the same box. Take a closer look up here. This hole across is six mil. This hole across, the Allen hole, is eight mil. What you can do is refill from a big CO2 bottle um, either of these using a hose like this, and these aren't expensive. Uh, a friend of mine actually gave me a loan of this one to do it. And it works fine, you can charge them up, but you can't get a full charge into them, and so it lasts about a week or two. That's fine, you could keep doing that. But I've got a big bottle now that's full. So I got this thing, and this is a SodaStream Quick Connect to CO2 bottle. So that's the big... Uh, m20 or something size that goes into the co2 bottle directly like a pub gas size bottle and this is a quick connect and the reason a quick connect is so that you can drill i don't know what that is a three quarter inch hole in your cabinet to run the line outside and then this snaps into your soda stream same thread same thread as the soda stream bottle but also the same size opening it's a six mil allen key fitting in there so I've taken this one apart and there's not much in there. There's a spring pushing up this uh, plunger fellow. And then that's about it. So I think to get this to work on the grower system, I've disconnected this already. So to get this one to work on here, I either need to fit an adapter into the bottom of this, which is possible, or I just need to bore out the center of this ever so slightly. So I'm gonna give that a go. Quick and dirty table saw top videos. That one's six mil, it fits in there. It should do, yeah, it fits in there. The grower bottle takes the eight mil. So I need to make a hole that is at least eight mil across rather than six mil across so that the thing, the pin inside in the grower blue system can push this down because at the moment it can't push it down so the gas won't come out. So unscrewing this, you have to kind of push it in and unscrew it, but once it starts, it's quite easy. This little brass plug. So if I leave the guts inside and just take the plug, as long as I don't go below the shelf in there, the step, I'll be okay. So basically I need to clamp this in somehow carefully into something and uh, just carefully drill it out with an eight mil bit, I think. I think that'll do it without gnawing up the threads and then just put two little dashes across the top with the hacksaw or something so that I can get a big flat screwdriver in to tighten it up again. So let's give that a go. So the easiest way to hold it is to put it into the uh, unit it just came out of. So I've taken out the pin so that I don't damage it. I'm knocking it over a little bit, be gentle. What's going to happen is whenever I drill into it now, it's going to make it harder. It's going to tighten it in there. So let's just put it in. It's it's bearing up. Actually, I don't really want to do it. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. It's going to snug up against a rubber ring and it's going to crush it. So I don't really want to do it that way. I was going to use this as my holding device. I need to get a shot of compressed air in there to blow all of the brass dust out now. I'm halfway there. We're getting somewhere. I've got it very loosely chucked in the lathe. I realise there's a potential for this to all go very, very badly wrong. Um, let's turn the lathe on. Put it on slow. Lathe's on slow. So with the lathe on slow, let's press start. Let's bring the tailstock in. up just bring it in very gently everything's just very gently chopped I want to go real slow here it's wandering everywhere probably need to center drill it So 
just walking it in really slowly. You only need to win about five mil or something like less than that, even four mil. Doing a nice job though. About halfway there. bottom now. Might be enough to relieve it though to get the pin to open. Okay, I've lost the bit in the chuck. Daddy. Yes, see? It's dinner time. Dinner time, okay. I'll just tighten it up a tiny, tiny bit here. Quit while I'm ahead, but it's not my way. Right, I'm gonna quit there. It's a tiny bit of hex at the bottom. So that's what it looks like now. Hopefully, hopefully, we can. I'll give it a shot of compressed air and it'll get the bits out of it. So this one has an O ring in it. I need to be quite careful. I managed to mar that edge, and that's a bit of a goofball move because I wonder if there's a if it bears a seal down upon that I might have a, like a rubber ring that that seals against I suspect that it does uh oh we'll see what happens if it I need to skim the top of it or something so let's rebuild it spring I think this is just aluminium spring the plunger and this guy so there's a tiny silicone ring on the plunger as well. I presume it's silicone. Silicon? I don't know. Which is it? I wonder can I do this with my fingernail? I only needed to get a bit below flush. I'd say that's not bad. Something small, like a little screwdriver. Just bring it around with that. Might do it, it's below the top, that's where you want it. A bit concerned about this fellow, but uh let's see it might uh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take it apart and take a little bit off with the file, I think. So I just ran the file across it and that's that's pretty good. A little bit sharp maybe. Not not enough to cut me, not that sharp, and I gave it a shot of compressed air again. So plunger and plug and just bring it up like that, and I'm convinced that this will work. And so I'll bring it into the machine and we'll give it a try. Because I left a tiny bit of hex at the bottom, you can see. Yeah, I left just enough as well, so I didn't even need to make those saw cuts. So I could have done it that way, just drilling it out. Maybe that's a lesson learned. Let's try it in the machine. So back inside. Let's take out the old one, which I know is empty because it stopped making fizzy, fizzy, fizzy. And then disconnect that quick release. This has to go in, but it's very difficult to reach in because you're. I think I could just do it with the tips of my fingers. That's it. I've got a start on it, and I've got a socket that fits. It there, that's a half inch Whitworth socket. Now, you really don't want it to be tight. The awkward bit then, the difficult bit is getting this quick release on. You have to pull it down to get it on. I can just reach it with the tips of my fingers. 
one side, so much the better. Nope. Get it on the bottle. Let's just check that that's clean. Tighten it up a little bit. It's got a rubber washer, so it shouldn't need too much tightening. Let's open it and listen for hissing. Okay, it's open. Now, if it works, the tap will run when I turn it on. So if I turn on the fizzy side, no, it's not running, it's not running right, mm, it should run. Nope. It should run like this. It should run like that if it's working. But it's not right, why not? So I've done a bit more work on it, I've taken a step the top down about two mil uh, to the thickness of the root of the thread because I think that might be stopping it and then I also don't know if the the hex here was stopping it. it used to come to about this level where my thumbnail is but I so I've taken that back a bit as well not quite into the bottom but that might fit now it's getting more and more modified I just gave it a spin on the lathe I'll insert it and we'll see if it works the insertion will be the same as before so it's back in again and it'll either work or it won't Oh, it seems to be working. It seems to be working. That's a success. Quite a heavy modification, that. So you saw what it looked like when it didn't work, and that was the way it worked with the soda stream bottles. It tastes like fizzy water. So then, grow a soda stream. The bit that I wasn't paying attention to was the distance between the top and this neck here. This one's quite a bit shorter, so if I put them end to end, the soda stream has this extra relief here of a few mil, and it's this shoulder here is probably stopping the bottle going in. So I maybe didn't need to cut it all the way down to the root of the thread, but I did need to chop it off. I don't think it's this top bit. I'd say it's probably the bottom, because it's the difference between the two bottles. You see, the thread here starts two mil back as well, so it can't have hurt it, but... I don't think it made any difference. I think the difference would be, and with the soda stream bottles as well, if you were to cut, um, what would it be? Three mil, maybe, off here and bring it down to this diameter, which is, I don't know, two mil greater than the diameter here. Well, two, pl two, two mil radius greater, uh, two on each side, then it might fit, which I could do, but I have no great desire to. If it's gonna work with the massive bottle, if it's going to work with this massive bottle then it'll probably be okay for months and months on end one of these refilled from that bottle will do about a week or two because you can only get 100 grams into it not the full 400 and 500 grams that it should take i don't know why that is something about dip tubes and the internet and venting out the gas you might have to like fill it and then vent it at the same time or something but i i just don't know as it stands, a little bit of lathe work to that nipple made it fit. Right, Groa, you're working again with a black line. So my next job is to drill a hole through the wall and put the bottle outside, I think. Questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.